Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the UFC card for today from a very unique perspective. Um, we are going to dedicate this entire video to um, how to win the $100,000 specifically um, in the big GPP today. And, and hopefully, you know, the real goal is to give you some ideas of how to win the 100000 in subsequent slates, kind of ways to use SaberSim and tools like it, like to your advantage. Um, I was doing a, a baseball breakdown with Bobby the other day, and before we even got started, he said, okay, so how am I going to get different here and, and still have a chance to win? And you know what? That's That's really... All DFS is. See, that's all DFS is. Like it's easy. But that, but that is the dilemma of playing DFS lineups in a nutshell. How do you find lineups that not only are going to pay a lot when they win, but also have a shot? How do you find lineups that not everybody that people are not going to play, except for you, that actually do have a chance to win? And this week couldn't come as a better better week from a, an MMA slate perspective to dive into this because it's no only an eleven fight card now, and when you have an eleven fight card in UFC, it is extremely difficult to get unique. The way the combinations work, it's just very very difficult. Um, well, I should say that it's very difficult to get unique with a lineup that has a chance. I mean, I could certainly come up with infinite lineups that that have no chance that will be unique, okay? I could play this 10, six lowest salaried fighters on the card. I promise you, maybe someone will play that just for spite, but 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 no one's playing that, and it also has no chance to win. You know, I could triple stack, like, some of these fights. That, that will have no chance to win, but it'll be unique. I could also build plenty of lineups that have a good a good enough rate to get into the optimal, but I, those are going to be duped by many, many people. So even when you get so fortunate as to get into the optimal, it's not worth it because you're, you're chopping it with so many people. So how do you find that middle ground? Now, again, there's two philosophies on playing GPPs, especially ones like this. And we're going to go with the second. Okay, the, the, the first way to consider things is build your lineups come up with all your good lineups and then try to figure out of those good lineups, which ones are, you know, rating to be somewhat unique. Okay. The other philosophy is to start with the lineups that you think are going to be unique and then figure out which one of those is playable. Okay. And, and they're, they're subtle, they're subtly different. Okay. Okay. Exhibit A, when you start with good lineups and then you try to find out what's going to be unique, I promise you you're going to have good lineups. But I'm not so sure you're going to end up getting unique enough. And when you start with the other one, where you start with the unique lineups and then try to find ones that are good, I promise you you're going to start get unique lineups. I can't promise you you're going to win anything. Okay. Now, for this particular card and for this particular fight card and, and this 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 number of fights, I'm going to go with B. I'm going to start with lineups that have a chance to cash big and hope that we kind of get good ones, okay? So so how do you do all of this, right? That's that's really good philosophy, but how do you do all this? How do you do all this with the tools available to you? Okay, so we've already loaded our projections in. We've already loaded our ownership in. You could use Saber Sims, use whoever you want, okay? And we already ran 5,000 lineups, so we're starting with at least a pool of 5,000 lineups that that we're going to choose from, okay? In, in my view is that if you can't find a, a lineup within a, a, with, among 5,000 that fits your criterion, then you're probably putting bad criterion in. So even though we're going to just force in lineups that we think are going to be unique, we have to start with some pool of some reasonableness, Okay. And 5,000 lineups in an 11-fight card is plenty, to say the least. Um, so now the question is, is how do you use these tools to kind of get what you want to do? All right. So the first thing I will show you is kind of a weird cheat code on a slate like this. So 
So again, you ran the 5,000 lineups and lo and behold, when Saber Sim just kind of just ranks them for you, for some reason, they rate it by MMA default to start off with. Okay. And it's kind of a weird misnomer to call it a default because people think, oh, the default lineups are the most you know conservative, whatever, but no. MMA default is kind of a weird term of art with Sabersim. I don't know why they call it default, but when you get into the weeds here and you see what MMA default actually is, this formula, not to get too into it, but is just about like the most hyper aggro way to rate, rate lineups that I've seen. Okay. Um, now, the funny thing is you could actually make it more obscene if you want to. But the, the real thing is that in addition to counting projections and digging it for ownership or whatever, is this 99th percentile requirement. And what that means is that is that you're only getting lineups that are at the very, very end of the of the var of the distribution curve, you know, like of, of the variance curve. Things are always going your way in the 99th percentile lineup, um, which is why it's very aggressive because it doesn't go 99 percentile too often all right um now what i did and what you can do as well is you could screw around and create your own like metric like what i did this is this is kind of fun is i created this thing called sheets defaults where i took the mma default formula copied it and then i just made one change instead of making 99th percentile i made 95th percentile it still becomes ridiculous, okay? So the first thing I would I would say is that when you have a card like this and you have an 11 fight card, you should really consider playing as many lineups as you can stomach from one of these hyper-aggressive ranking systems. Uh, I prefer sheets default to a little less, whatever, but you could create your own. Okay. But as always, the question is how many of them do you play? You know, do you play all 150 from this psycho build? Um, maybe. Usually I only play at max 50 because you'll get 13 or 14 fight cards. But on an 11 fight card, I mean, you you could you could make the argument that you could just jam these. Now, the key in jamming them is really just to not look and see who you have. Because if you did, and you know anything about MMA, and you know anything about DFS, you probably wouldn't want to play them. Okay? Um, literally, don't look. Because it, you're not going to be happy that you did. Um, the other thing before we kind of move on is that one thing that is by default not, I mean, is checked in your lineup rules before you even built those 5,000 is the limitation on, on stacking when it says don't use opposing fighters. Um, now, that's up to you always, whether you can uncheck check this or not. So here's my view. My view is that you should always uncheck it because... If the Sims are going to do what they're supposed to, they say they're supposed to do, it's going to factor in all of that. You know, it's going to factor in how, what kind of upside a stack fight has. So for me, I would actually uncheck this and let them stack. If you listen, if you believe in the Sims and you believe that, that it will take that into consideration, uh, then yes, I would do that. I would uncheck that. I did not this time. Okay, so that's one thing you could do. It's kind of a weird cheat code. You could just use the MMA default or Sheets default, whatever, settings, and 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 jam like this and really not be happy with who you have. And that's okay. I really do believe that. The other thing you could do is, is force in lower own combinations in other ways. And, and there's... I mean, only a couple of ways I can think of. Number one is to do geo mean filtering, which literally forces in a low ownership number. Um, and I'll show you how to do that for this card. But I do think that on a card like this, it's as valuable as an, in, in any. Okay. And the other thing we're going to get to is the other way to reduce ownership without like forcing an ownership number down 
is by uh is by uh leaving money on the table okay um and we'll 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 leave a salary on the table we'll we'll do that third but let, let's let's go over how the geo mean stuff works because again I haven't done this in a I haven't gone over this in a while and this there is going to be actually an interesting point here so what we're going to be doing is 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 telling Saber Sam that I'm going to only want lineups of these five thousand that are low owned, and low owned meaning basically a product of the of the ownership of all six of them. So the question is is what what number do we want to put in there? And this geo mean calculator, which it's on it's on True DFS, it's it's pretty real. It's really easy actually to create your own spreadsheet like this. I'll even show you the the formula really easily. But all you need to know is how many people are in the, going to be, how many, what's the contest size and how many entrants per lineup. And it could figure this out for you. So the contest size is 26,117. And then six players in the lineup. And let's say you want to have the max number of dupes is one. You see this, this calculates what geo mean you're going to want to filter to. And this is the formula, extremely trivial. But if you don't want to do this, it's, it's the calculator is there on TrueDFS for you. Um, Okay, so this number 18.3, what we're going to want to do is we'll go back to the main set of lineups, okay? It's the Sim Diversity 10. That's just, that's just we're going we're gonna to re-rank these anyway. So the Sim Diversity 10 setting is the most, I don't want to say conservative, but yeah, let's, it's, it's general upside. So when you get into this one, you know, you go into the weeds, you click the eye, the eyeglass. It's a hundred times the sim optimal times plus. One. So it's not taking in the 99th percentile outcomes. It's turning in the sim optimals and you're not digging average ownership as much. So minus 0.2 instead. So it's fine, but you play, a, you play a whole set with at sim diversity 10. You're not getting, you're, you're never, not never, but you're rarely competing for the whole prize. I mean, I promise you, I just, I've done, done this too long. Um, but it's a good ranking system to start with if you're going to then start to filter by ownership and money on the table and things like that. So let's see if we can get lineups with a geo mean of what did I say? 18. Let's just see. Hold on. Um, 18.3 within this 5,000 even. So let's just see geo mean. Uh, no, we're going to filter. We don't, we're not going to list by GOM. We're going to list by Sim Diversity 10, and then we're going to filter. Add filter. I don't know how many we're even going to get. Let's see. Geo mean less than 18.3. Let's, let's see. Save. And what do we get? Only two. <laughs> it's like, so, uh, as, as I was saying, it's, uh, extremely difficult you know to get unique lineups uh in an 11 fight card okay um i mean you could then keep scrolling up in other words if if 18 isn't going to work what if you want to do five dupes for example and i will tell you this the ownership that i have in here are probably a little bit low because with some canceled fights, we haven't really adjusted the ownership yet. But if you want to go for five dupes, you go to geo mean of 24. Let's see what that looks like. Geo mean less than 24. Can we get there? Yeah. So you can get there with, with, with less than five dupes. So, so that, that's another thing you can do. Okay. It's just force in the low ownership in this way. And, and this is this isn't bad. I think this isn't bad either. So like if you wanted to, if you played 50 lineups from or 75 lineups from the NMA default, 75 lineups from this, and then hope nothing overlapped. Well, you don't you wouldn't have to hope. You we could screen for that in a different spreadsheet. I think that th this is probably worth doing also. Okay. Um so the first set, sheets default, fine. This one, the geo mean filtering, I would at five dupes, that's that's fine as well. Um 
And then we'll talk about the, um, whatchamacallit, the, uh, well, for example, hold on, let, I want to try something here. Let's, um, I want to see how many, this is going to be an interesting question. How many of the 150 that I have in uh, GeoMean filtering are also showing up in the MMA default setting or the, you know, the Sheets default one that we built already? Well, let's um let's 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 find out. So this is what we're gonna do. First, we're going to save this to CSV. And what this is going to be, this is going to be again the um the geo mean the geo mean set. So just we really don't even have to do that. What we can do is just we'll copy those already. So we're sort of cheating here. So we're gonna copy this and we're gonna go into that spreadsheet that I showed you before that finds and eliminates dupes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put these geo mean lineups, I'll show you, into here. Boom. Okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and get those uh, sheets default lineups again. So let's uh, unfilter this. We'll go back and get those um, sheets default lineups. Uh, where was it? Uh, sheets default lineups. We'll download those. Where? Take these. I wonder how many are going to overlap. You have three hundred. Oops. Scoot something up. Hold on a minute. How many? I've built 300 lineups, right? Two different settings, though. How many are going to show up in both? So what we've done is we put all 300 lineups in here. I wonder how many actual lineups there are. It's not going to be 300. I don't think. I mean, I think there's got to be some crossover between those two settings, right? Let's see. So we're removing the duplicates. It's taking a little while. And they're actually, wow, 54 of them are duped. Okay? So what you can do, this me, me, meaning that those, that, 54 lineups show up in both sets of aggressive screens. So what I would do, and again, this I can't promise this is going to work, but I'm going to regard these lineups as the nuts, okay? Line, these 53 lineups, we are going to definitely play. How about that? File, new, blank workbook. Boom. And we're going to call these... Save, and you know, we're going to call this as we're going to save this as um, June fifteen Agro Core. Okay, so those fifty three lineups or fifty whatever fifty two whatever they are, I don't even care what they are. They they're making it, they're making it into the mix. Okay. Huh? Um. So we, we did geo mean filtering. We did, you know, rating by sheets default and MMA default and uh, sheets default. And then what's left is, is the leaving money on the table piece. So you could leave money on the table and, and in a way get unique because while the individual fighters are, you know, their ownership are going to be the same, the combination of those in, in, in these lineups are going to be a little bit different. Um, and yes, it's, it's the normal trade-off you're, you're trading the, you know, you're trading dupes for less chance to win. Okay. Because your, your, your net projection is going to be lower. Um, so th there, there's two things I would, I would caution about leaving money on the table. O only in, I would really leave money on the table specifically in those lineups where, you know, you do have like upside underdogs. You know what I mean? Like if, if if you're leaving money on the table so that you can play, 
I don't know, uh, pick one, uh, whatever it is. Somebody you don't think has a lot of upside, but maybe money line value, like Judice, for example. Like Judice is really strong underdog play, but maybe she doesn't have such great upside. Um, or even even someone like Miles Johns. Like I wouldn't play a Miles Johns lineup and leave money on the table, right? Because if you leave money on the table with Miles Johns, if you're playing that he outscores like some 9K guy or something, that's really hard for someone like him. Um, so anyway, it's hard to know exactly what to leave on the table. So here's a couple of targeted things you can do, right? Now, again, this is all stuff that I've kind of just played with and haven't perfected to say the least, but um, we re-rate everything by Sim Diversity 10 or by the Sims. I mean, same I wouldn't say same thing. You want to you want to want to rate these by the Sims? All right, we can do that too. So uh, throw down risk adjusted ROI, which we did already. We'll rate them here. It's the same stuff. I mean, it's very similar. Um, what you can do is is see what the the pool looks like. All right. So let's um let's go to. I'm, I'm, just, I'm doing this for a reason, which is going to be clear hopefully soon. So we look at the overall pool of lineups that we created here. And you have, this is probably what the ownership is going to look like. Okay. And and here's what we would want to play of these guys. And it, it pretty much resembles the ownership. I mean, to some degree, right? If you were just playing like straight lineups. So what you could do is look at, the the higher owned fighters and see if you can leave money on the table with them specifically like i don't know let's say you like adam fugit for example you'd be getting 30 percent of adam fugit but in the adam fugit lineups i would probably recommend leaving enough money on the table to allow other people to get to Josh Quinlan, his opponent. You know, if you get 7,900, Quinlan's 8,300, I would require that in all Fugit lineups, we leave 400 on the table, okay? Uh, this way, you know, you, you ensure that at least you're getting somewhat different because in those lineups, the optimizers will drag everybody up to, up to Quinlan. So at least you're going to get a little bit different there. Um... The other thing you can do is say Julia Palastri, or no, not so Palastri or Judas necessarily. Boy, there aren't that many great examples of this, huh? Like Perez is a good example. He's going to be, he's got to be higher on than 28%, right? So one thing you could do is play Perez and leave enough money on the table that would let people get to Tsaira. So 7,600 Perez and leave 1,000 on the table. Um, and that's something that you can do. And the good thing is I'm not worried too much about Perez getting beat by someone, well, not worried between him and Tyra necessarily. So I think that's fine. You So you leave Perez, you play Perez, and then you leave 1,000 on the table. In those lineups, I think that's that's reasonable. What are some of the under underdogs that? Okay, Brady Highstand. This is a good example. I think he's going to be. Boy, I thought he was going to be somewhat popular. I guess not. Um, I think he's got to be though. No, thirty percent ownership projection. I don't know. Let's see what he would look like instead of the Sims. Let's let's just rate by Sim Diversity ten. See if this. Yes, this is a little more likely. So. Brady, he stand, yeah, more like 39%. Right, this this makes a little more sense. I mean, all that wrestling upside. Th this is probably what ownership is going to look like. Like something like this. Tyra maybe a little less and Perez a little bit more. That would be the one difference that I would note. You know, Perez is not going to be, well, 24%. I think this one's right. Tyra 43. Perez maybe a little more than 24 but I think this 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 is a pretty good explanation of what people are going to play. Um. So I think he stand as well. I mean, he stand is how much? He's seventy five hundred. If you want to leave, you know, uh, 
twelve hundred on the table in in he stand lineups. I mean, he's going to be popular, so I think that's worth it too. So what you could do, like for example, I mean, this is going to be kind of hard, but let's uh, let's just look at the he stand lineups just to show you what that would look like. Let's see if we can even do it. So here are all the he stand lineups, and now that see, there's only fifty nine, but but that's fine because we want we want more. Let's put in um. Let's just see something. Hold on a minute. Let's take this out and let's look at three hundred instead. We can look at more. How about we look at how about we look at five hundred? Because I want to get down to, I want to filter through to these he stand things. So let's go again. He stand lineups, and then we'll add a filter. And what did I say? Twelve hundred for him. Do we have any of these? Let's just see. Salary less than. No, he stand was 77, wasn't he? Well, let's just see what happens if we leave 1,000 on the table. And we'll, we'll come back to it in a second, how much we're actually supposed to leave. Okay, so we didn't find any. Okay, so we didn't find any he stand lineups that left 1,200 on the table anywhere in our 5,000. Um, I just want to confirm that. Let's... um. Well, I mean, this is where we're looking at it, right? We're looking at all 500 all the way down to here, right? Right? These are all, these are all of them. So the point is, is that leaving the 1200 on the table, it's really, it's really moving us so far out of our, out of our um, projections that it's just not worth it, you know? On the other hand, I, I imagine that the the fugit ones we can do right if if you want or the Perez ones, no. But again, leaving a thousand on the table is proving very um is proving very uh costly. Let's we'll just take a look for a second. Let's 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 start by leaving a thousand on the table. Oh, I oh I said I think I put less than a thousand as far as salary goes. Did I? What did I what did I do? Hold on. Let's do this again. Sorry about this. Let's go back. Brady He stand. Boom. And then filter by. I put a thousand and not forty nine hundred. Forty nine thousand. Sorry. Forty nine thousand. Yes, yeah, so there are yes, yeah, so there are plenty. Okay. Sorry about that. So how much do we really need to leave here? 75 and 87. So 1,200 on the table we need to leave. Let's uh, change this less than 48.8 or 48.9 because we'll leave 1,200. So of these 226 lineups that have he stand that's leaving 1,200 on the table, um, how many do we want? Like the top, how many? Well, there's a question, right? So if, if we presume that we were going to get 30% of, of he stands anyway, then, then you could go ahead and play whatever, you know, whatever 30% of your remaining is. But the thing is, we've already built other lineups, right? So you don't want to overdupe those and you don't want to get too much of he stand. So that's what makes things a little bit difficult. But for the purposes of this, let's say that we're going to build 52 of those nut lineups, like I said, and then we're going to fill in some others. So I think it's okay to at least force in some lineups, as long as they're not duped, that fit this criterion with Brady Highstand. So Highstand will put him, uh, I don't know, 15%. So that would be how many? 10 lineups? No, no, no. Uh, 22 lineups? With just this setting, I think that's fair, right? Ooh, it wouldn't let me do 22. Oh, because. So we actually only want the top 22 that fit this, right? Well, we could just download it from here. So let's um, let's just actually do it from here. Save to CSV. Okay. 
And we're just going to take these and we're going to do, they'll build 22 of them. Okay. So two through 23. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to that dupe calculator. And we're going to go back to that dupe calculator. And we're going to start like a new thing of, of salary left on the table stuff. All right. So we're going to put the 22 over there. And then um, we're going to do something with the, with another fighter. So let's do uh, get rid of he stand. We were talking about doing some with uh, who was it? Fugit? No, we we're talking about doing it with he stand for sure on oh, Perez, right? So Perez is going to leave a thousand on the table. So let's start with him. So, well, we, let's leave the same amount on the table with him. Actually, this is what we're going to do. We're going to leave forty nine thousand. Do this, and then we're going to do just the Perez lineups. Yes. Um. And so we could build, I guess, twenty two of those. So fifteen percent of the Perez leaving 1100 on the table. Right? So let's do that. Twenty-two of these. And again, I'm making it up. I, I have no idea how many I'm supposed to build. It's another 22. So let's get rid of this. And who else are going to be probably pretty popular underdogs? that have upside that we can leave money on the table you know um those are the real the big ones right i mean palastri so here's the problem with palastri i'm getting like she's only getting like what 24 percent. that's not that big a deal right well let's get rid of the filter for a second hold on As far as the overall pool here, Costa, Judice is getting, Judice is getting like 30% ownership. So we're probably going to have to do something with her. Okay. Um, but the problem is, is that her opponent has just so little upside, you know? When I say that, I mean that, that leaving money on the table to allow people to get to other fight, you know, to get to her opponent isn't really going to, do much with her um and she herself has very fishy upside i think but her price was 7200 i do think that we should do some because this is why if she does even win you know what i mean what if you left 1100 on the table like if you got away with that and left 1100 on the table and she outscored say quinlan I mean, this would be really big. So maybe, ugh, maybe a few lines with Judice leaving money on the table. Is that fine? John's leaving two hundred on the table. It really doesn't do anything for me. And Fugit leaving three hundred on the table, four hundred on the table, really doesn't do much for me either. Except for the fact that, again, like if you can get him to win and you get that double leverage over Quinlan, yeah, maybe we build some with Fugit. And we'll build some with some with Fugit and some with Judice. So let's 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 again making it up. But we're gonna again, we're gonna leave um for Judice, we're gonna have to leave a thousand on the table. No more. No, we're gonna leave it eleven hundred because we're we're using her to, to get to away from Quinlan. So let's go filter. Um Salary less than forty nine thousand, and then we're gonna play uh, Judice. Boom, and we're gonna play. You know what do we want? Twenty? No, we'll, we'll just play fifteen of her. And again, just making it up. How many? Yeah. And again, I've not seen overall exposures here. So this is like one of the one of the issues here. Okay. 
So what we filled in is a bunch of salary restraint ones, which is about 60. Okay. And then what I think I want to do, well, first of all, let's make sure, let's run these for dupes. Um, there weren't, there were none, which is actually, there were nine. So we now have 50. Okay. Remember we have 50 of those. We have 52 of those nut ones. So we need another like 50 lineups or so. So I think we can go back to that original pool of sheets default or geo mean ones and get the top ones of those. So let's go back there. Let's go back to uh, Sheets Default again. We'll get just a couple, I guess a few more. Actually, let's get the top one. So let's, I don't know if those are ones that were, uh, that were duped. So we'll get, I don't know, 20 of these, it seems to make sense, or even more, right? We, let's try 25 of these even. Twenty-five of these. Let's just get greedy. And then we'll go back and do the the sim diversity 10 with geo mean that we did. And we can do that again really, really quickly. Um what was it? Uh 24, right? Was the geo mean filtering thing? Mean less than 24. Okay. And then we will download some of those. Another 26, maybe. And we'll see what we're left with. Copy. Back in here. Paste. Boom. And let's uh, remove dupes here. Any dupes there? Or only one? So now we're going to try to put all of this together. So we have these 199, and then we're going to go back to that, you know, kind of like the nuts one. The agro core, we're going to put those back in. the agro core back in and now let's see how many unique this will be all these are very aggressively designed okay lineups let's see how many dupes okay so we still have to do a little bit of work we have what do we have so far 135 so we need to come up with 15 more from either of those screens that we've done one thing we could do is do another blanket lineup bill where we leave money on the table for like 1100 because that seems to be the the thing that you know that 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 number that kind of kept coming up so why don't we do that let's build another 15 lineups which just leave 1500 on the table just the regular sim diversity 10 or even the you know or even the risk adjusted roi ones okay whatever but let's uh filter those salary less than 49,000. And we just want like 15. We're not, it's not like a big deal. Okay. Yeah. So we'll build um, six. Again, we're getting greedy here. Well, you know, we'll build 20. And if we get a dupe, we'll, we'll, we'll know which one we have to get. We'll get rid of the last. Okay. So let's put these in. Remove duplicate lineups. And we have slightly more than 150, but that's totally okay. We will now go and copy. And then download, paste. 
Boom. Save. Upload and done. Now I very well might do this whole thing all over again. And what's cool about this is that I didn't tell any of you who I have because quite honestly, I don't know. All I know is that I I at least did a process <laughs> um, and, and picked a whole bunch of what I considered high upside lineups that reflected my projections and, and my ownership projections and used the tools at my disposal to try to walk that line between lineups that have a chance and lineups that could pay a lot. And again, I, I haven't said I perfected this yet. Every week I try to just do a little better and sometimes I do a little worse, but we're all trying to learn. Hopefully you guys learned from this and uh, good luck, everybody.